So Wilder here is doing a lot of kind of isolated shoulder work through lat raises and, and frontal raises. Now this is quite beneficial for boxing, but very beneficial for Wilder's punch power. The reason why it's beneficial for boxing is because boxers need their shoulders to be strong. They need good shoulder strength and shoulder endurance to be in that stance and guard position and also throw thousands of punches. Boxers struggle overloading their shoulder muscles through overhead pressing, even though that this is the most beneficial and effective way in building shoulder strength because of limitations in shoulder mobility and stability. They struggle to lift enough load where it's a safe and effective process. So we do use the landmine overhead shoulder activities, but it's also very important to include isolated shoulder exercises into your regime, whether that's a prone reverse fly, and lateral raises, or what Deontay Wilder's using here is frontal raises. We say Wilder, when he's using the frontal raises, these are quite beneficial for him. He uses especially this lead hand, uses it as a range finder for his backhand. He sets up all of his backhand shots by setting up that lead hand first. He's very, very active without throwing it that much, so he needs that strength in this position to either set it up, start creating movement in his opponent, or even like kind of blocking shots as well. He holds it quite low, so that shoulder's got to be really, really active in there. And to set up his power punches, it's a range finder. Get in that range so then he can throw maximum force, maximum effort into that right hand. And also he's providing that rotational element as well. He's almost getting side on to then whip that full torso through and generate as much power in a short amount of time. This doesn't look like a powerful exercise and that it can transfer into powerful punching performance. It's got really, really light weight here. It works for Deontay Wilder in that very specific context. Setting up that lead hand, being very active with that lead hand, be a range finder for powerful backhand, and also to create that pre-rotation to drive in, to generate more torque and more force into that brutal knockout of the right hand. So we've got some powerful med ball throws here. It throws it as a chest throw, and also with a med ball punch throw. Now what's really interesting looking at this and looking at specifically why Deontay Wilder's performing activity in this way is that he throws all of his body weight into it. In the chest pass, it's almost like a push off on his leg, driving forward. And then with the med ball punch throw, it's like literally rotating all the way through where his head's like nearly down at his knee. It's almost like rotating all the way through and putting all of his body weight into that action. With Deontay Wilder, if you look at his knockout punches, he throws all of his body weight into that one shot. He has amount of faith into that backhand that he's gonna knock out that opponent or knock him down at least, that he can overcommit into that shot. From a defensive point of view, this leaves boxers in a vulnerable position, but because Deontay Wilder's got that faith in that backhand, he like overcommits into it. So you can see why these exercises here, where he's driving his body weight all the way into that throw, you can see why this can have a specific transfer into Deontay Wilder's power. Now, from a general point of view, with the standing med ball chest pass, this is great in terms of like kinetic chain sequencing, transferring force from foot all the way through to the fist. Quite underloaded doing it in this way, using your body weight as momentum in terms of like trying to overload upper body speed and hand speed is probably like working a little bit in no man's land here. You want to be restricting any form of contributing factors into that upper body hand speed if you're wanting to isolate and improve that hand speed. So we do most of our med ball chest passes in a supine position, either on the floor or on a bench. And also we've found boxers are quite underloaded during a med ball chest pass. If they're using three, five, maybe even eight kilos, the amount of momentum that they're creating through the weight that they're moving and how fast they're moving it is quite underloaded compared to a bench press throw or a med ball chest pass with the bands. So if you're looking to put this exercise in, in terms of like med ball chest passes, look to try and go as heavy as possible, between eight and 12 kilos. If you're walking around anywhere between 55 kilos to 75 kilos, then if you're heavyweight, you probably need to go a little bit heavier than this. And then adding a red band around it as well, doing it between eight and 12 kilos, red band around the back and driving it through all the way through the sticking point. So we've got Deontay Wilder performing some rotational med ball throws. Fantastic exercise we use at Boxing Science. We've mentioned previously that Deontay Wilder generates a lot of force going through the kinetic chain, through rotating, all the way through the punch. So it's a fantastic exercise to use to transfer into his punching power. Now at Boxing Science, we've formed a little bit of research recently where we're looking at the contributing factors towards a harder punch, so transferring that into the landmine punch throw. And what we found was that around about 50 or 60% is explained by the jump height. So the higher that you can jump, 
harder that you can punch. Now I can see that Deontay Wilder's got a basketball background, so I'm expecting him that he's got a quite a good kind of movement jump height. But recently I've been looking at some new piece of research, rotational forces, isometric rotational strength, contribution to punch power. Very early stages of this, we're looking to try and publish this research, but we're seeing between 65 and 75% transfer of rotational power and rotational strength into that punch. So you can see that Deontay Wilder has got fantastic rotational power into the punch. And this is probably what the contributing factor into how hard he can punch. So the rotational med ball throws here is a useful tool and almost a vital tool for Deontay Wilder's punching. So Wilder's performing some cable punches here. You see that is really relying on that rotation and that upper body strength, which I think is vital for his punching power. But from a general standpoint, you probably wouldn't look to do this exercise. He's ragging it through, getting to this point and then just like using his upper body rather than kind of generating that force momentum through the lower body. And the angle of the weight distribution is more horizontal rather than kind of that vertical impulse. Obviously a punch is formed in a horizontal format, but the weight is transferred vertically. So we need to make sure that we're overloading that lower body and trying to get that vertical impulse and driving it through. That's why the landmine punch is so important because where the weight is actually put onto that back leg and really driving through that action there, generating as much force through hip and torso rotation and the hands are just there to basically deliver that landmine punch. And also with the med ball punch throw, encourage our athletes to load up that rear leg and to try and get as much loading through the lower body as much as it can to transfer that into a punch specific action. <laughs>